welcome to the second part of meeting the node. This time we will learn a little more about nodes. If you remember the previous tutorial, we have just created a node, just a single node like this. We will see three more things about it. The first one is signals. Uh, every node has uh, signals that are just like notifications that something has happened. Uh, it's like a callback, but it just happens and you know about it. When you press this button here, you can see the list of signals for this node. For example, uh, that it enter the scene tree, exit the scene tree, it was renamed, or the script has changed for another script. There are other nodes, for example, uh, rigid body. You can check that. It has different kind of signals, like uh, related to uh, collisions with another body. Uh, you can, for example, click it with your mouse uh, and it's going to uh, report the input event. Uh, it will tell you when the mouse enters and exits a rigid body in the screen. Uh, since this generates canvas item, which we will, we will see it later, but it can draw, it can hide, uh, it has uh, visual stuff, and then you can see the ones we have seen before, which is entering the tree, exiting the tree, node rename, etc. Et so, what is the nice thing with signals is that uh, you don't have to poll for things to happen. Uh, when you start making games, uh, one usual mistake is uh, in, in a, you make a loop, and then you start polling for things like did it collide? Is the mouse inside the area of the of the object and things like that? With signals, uh, we just know when something happened. We are being told that something happened at the time it happens. So you don't have to write any code that constantly checks for this condition. Uh, and it's really easy to use. Let's just save the scene and then let's create a script. When you connect to a signal, you just connect the signal, you press connect. You can choose to which node you want to connect the signal to. Uh, you can see in red the node that is currently selected, but you generally connect the signal to a script or a node that has a script. So you just, in this case, select node, which is the node that has the script. Um, and uh, you have the option for making a function, which does this when you connect. Here you can see when the node enters the scene tree, this function will be called and the connection already is done, as you can see here. Uh, you have just connected this and then the function will will automatically appear and be called when this signal happens. So, what else can we do with the node besides signals? Something interesting is that in Godot is that you can use groups to group your nodes. For example, uh, you, you press this here the 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 um, uh, button with the two balloons and you can see a list of group groups in general the it's empty because the uh, does not use groups much internally uh, just for example uh, you can add the group charlies and you know that the node is, is in that group uh, how to get or do anything with the groups well we can check if the node if, is in a group like you call the function is in group. Not very useful. You can get all the nodes in a group by doing get pre get nodes in group uh, Charlie. This will return an array of nodes in that group. Or you can call a function in that group. Here you call the function hello to all the nodes of that of group Charlie. Uh, it's just cool for organizing yourself. For example, the enemies. Uh, if, if you um, something happens and you want to kill all the enemies, you just call the function in all the nodes in the group enemies. So it's it's quite handy. Okay. So what is the scene tree? We I will explain what the scene tree does in general lines. It does a few things. Scene tree is like an object floating in space. You can access it using the get tree function from any node. You just call get tree, and you get the scene tree. What is a get scene tree? It's an object that does all the scene management. It can like uh, contain the tree of nodes. Uh, it can change your scene. It can do group management. Everything that is uh, global to the scene is done by the scene tree object. Uh, let me look for it. Here it is. 
So uh, we can see here that we have a few group management functions like notify group, set group, get notes in group. Uh, it can do scene management. Here you can see the function for changing the scene. You have loaded the scene when the game starts and then you can change it for another one. This is a very simple scene change. It, it will instantly change the scene. You can do more complex things like uh, background loading and things like that, but this is for more advanced tutorials. It can also uh, do pausing of the game. You just use the set pause function and the game will be paused as we have seen in the previous tutorial and you can unpause it from calling the same function. Also, and most importantly, you can get the root node of your uh, scene. You can get the root node and then all the nodes you have used for, for loading the, the, the scene will be the, this node here is going to be a child of a root node. Uh, just showing a bit how it is used, for example, if you want to to change the scene, you, you call get tree and change scene. Here you have the code that changed the active scene to another one. You can uh, get the, all the nodes in a group. This returns like an, an array. The Charlie, the Charlie group, you can get all the nodes in this group. You can uh, pause the game, you get three. Here you, you pause the game. And finally, we can change the, change the no, sorry, uh, we can get the root node. You just call root, and this is the root node. You can uh, free it if you want, <laughs> but that's not very useful. Uh, okay, well, this has been everything related to the scene tree. Uh, I hope this was useful for you. Goodbye.